Today we bring you a cautionary tale about making sure your backups are actually backups. This is something that Windows has been doing for a while. I've been talking about it, but uh, it has wider ranges into any operating system. Let's go ahead and discuss. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And uh, of course, backups is something we've talked about from time to time. And uh, every now and again, I'll mention it, uh, maybe coinciding when I get back to Pennsylvania and I do a massive backup. And the reality is if, uh, you know, if uh, the, the whole van explodes down some, uh, uh, some weird back desert road or something, the most I will ever lose is just a few months of data. Because I have very good, very clear, and very comprehensive backups. I have local and offsite backups. Backups. I don't actually do any major cloud backups. I, I'm sorry, I just don't like your cloud services. Uh, but I do make sure I have backups in multiple different locations. You know, the chance of of my place and someone else's place blowing up on the same night is uh, pretty minusculely small. And uh, all that being said, we want to make sure you have valid backups. What I want to address today is Windows does something that uh, might actually invalidate your backups and you may not even know it. Uh, this was an article from Windows Central. Windows 11 bit locker encryption permanently locks three terabytes of user backups. And uh, this guy's quoted, uh, filled my PC with more spyware and viruses than I can count. And uh, to be very clear to the sensational headline, it is not Windows that filled his PC with spyware and viruses. It was him trying to gain access to the data that Microsoft locked. <laughs> All right. So what's going on here? Uh, one of the challenges is when uh, Windows started rolling out, in fact, that really what launched the Windows Wednesday approach we've been doing for the last couple of years was about two years ago. I'm out there in the deserts outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm seeing all this news about Windows 11 pushing the TPM modules, Windows 11 pushing your encryption, Windows 11 pushing your Windows user accounts. And one of those things that uh, I thought is, is an interesting talking point is the encryption. Now, to be very clear, I believe in encrypting your data. And encrypting your data is a useful tool in the event you lose your laptop or there is a break-in in your laptop or even your computer is stolen if your hard drive is accessed. But we have to understand there's a couple different forms of encryption. We have encryption in transit. This is something that, uh, you know, a good app might encrypt the data before it sends the data from your phone out to whatever central server is sending that data to. And uh, then there is encryption that is uh, that is at rest encryption. This is the type of encryption we're talking about here. Your hard drive, when it's not being used, is encrypted. But once it is, once it is in use. Once you are making use of your computer, that data is now available. Malware can still access the data once you turn your computer on. It can't access it, obviously. You know, nothing can access any of it when it's all turned off. But if, if your data is your computer's all turned off and your data is not encrypted and somebody steals your hard drive or your whole computer, they can take that drive out, popping to any other computer and access all of your files. By utilizing an at-risk encryption model, you have data which can not be accessed without the decryption keys. And that is why it is useful to do this. It is not a total game changer in everything. And then there's a few other forms of encryption as well. One of them we would like to see is encrypted files on other people's cloud servers. If you are using clouds, you want to use a cloud server in a way that the data as it sits on that cloud is itself encrypted, that it must require a key that you have access to in order to decrypt it. And that is an important thing. So I would never store all of my photos in a Google Photos or a Microsoft Photos or a Dropbox or something kind of designed for that general purpose. I would bunch it all together in an encrypted file and I would take that encrypted blob and put that on some file, which could be a Google Drive at that point in time or Dropbox or preferably something more secure and more uh, private like a private Nextcloud or something. That would be an appropriate place to store some of your data as well. But if you do that, you want it to be deeply encrypted. Now, this brings us to this article. What Windows started to do is 
it started to automatically enable BitLocker disk encryption. Now, it used to do this on professional and enterprise Windows versions. In fact, I remember back, I had one of my computers was a, uh, was a Windows professional, um, something in an enterprise type grade. And I didn't even know that at the time. And when I tried to pull the hard drive out at once to look at stuff, I was like, why can't I access any of my data? I actually had no idea that the drive was encrypted. I had no earthly idea. And I ran that computer for years. It was one of my longest running computers I've ever used. Uh, a great computer. It was a Dell and Spirin laptop computer. Um, and I, in fact, I think I still have it. I, I wiped it and put Linux on it. Um, and uh, everything works great except for the fact that the uh, the wireless card is uh, one of those old Broadcom ones doesn't work. So I swap that out. But then uh, otherwise, though, that computer still works great. But as the Windows Professional was on there, uh, whatever version it was, it was encrypted. Now, other Windows computers I had did not because most of the computers that I had laying around were home editions, which didn't have this. And even Windows 10 home editions did not have this. But they started rolling out, I think it was 24H2 on Windows 11, they started rolling out disk encryption. Now, if you had your computer already and you upgraded to, the, to 24H2, it would not encrypt it. But if you refresh your computer, if you uh, reinstalled it, if you bought a new one, or if you set it up new, it would automatically enable the disk encryption. And since they're trying to force these Microsoft accounts, it takes those decryption keys and puts them up in your Microsoft account, which means now Windows has access to decrypt your drive. But many times, because they consider a frightening or a complicated step, they don't tell you how to access that data to decrypt your own drives. And that is a problematic thing. Now, that's what this user ran into. He had no idea, but if you happen to have external hard drives, not USB drives, but external hard drives plugged in your computer during this process, it will encrypt those ones too. <laughs> awesome. And he had no idea. Uh, and hopefully now you know. So it does go in here about some of that history I had covered, although in a little bit less detail. But effectively what happened is he had ended up losing data on his drives. What happened is his computer was starting to get a little bit weird and wonky. And presumably the author of this article suggests that that's possibly because disk encryption was turned on. So what he had did is he had all of these three terabytes of backups in his computer. But his computer was starting to act a little bit bit weird and he what he did is he pushed the refresh PC button which in in uh, triggered a disk encryption through BitLocker but he didn't know that but since those backup hard drives of three terabytes worth of data were connected to the computer it encrypted all those as well and so that's the th running theory about what's going on on this. Now, presumably, if that was the case and he had his decryption key, because it says he has the decryption key for his main drive, but he didn't have it for those other drives. And that was the baffling part. So... Uh, obviously, there were a lot of mistakes made in this situation. Now, at this point in time, he couldn't access his stuff, so he just starts going online to every form of tool to possibly regain access, and that's where the idea of coming up with all of the, you know, all of the malware and stuff. This is what he says down here. He puts it on Reddit. PC was working fine, but was getting laggy. I figured I'd reinstall Windows 11. Never turned on BitLocker. No need for it. When I booted back into Windows. Two of my six drives, both data backups now are now encrypted. Can't access three terabytes of data. It's asking for a key, but I never set one up. Google only gives me results if you boot your, if your boot drive is locked, not a D or an E storage drive. I ran into some data recovery software, but it shows zero files to recover. And uh, this guy, uh, um, um, you know, makes, makes a little Star Wars joke. Update, I gave up. Uh, using every data retrieval program I could download. Nothing worked. Went to lots of sketchy sites, downloaded torrents. I'm sure filled my PC with more spyware and viruses I can count. I did a clean disk install with Windows 11 to wipe it out. The bootloader, <laughs> bootlicker, uh, bootlicker, yeah. The BitLocker screen came up again. Luckily, I do have the key for the main drive. Was able to get back into that one if it helps. And he explains his information. <laughs> Update two. I've given it up. Can't get my data back no matter what. 30 seconds ago, I pushed the format button and nu nuked years of data. Ugh! And then a bunch of um, uh, four-letter words that this family channel, uh, family-friendly channel does not uh, say addressed towards Microsoft. 
So there are a few uh, take home messages here. Um, obviously, the, the first of these is that, sorry to say in advance, it's very possible the same decryption key might have actually been the same on those. Now, to his point, he could not find instructions for decrypting uh, one of the other drives, although there's a neat way to do it. You see, it's really interesting. If you take that drive and you put it into Linux that has a bit locker, something like Tails, it just asks for the decryption key and you add it and boom, even if it's a D drive. <laughs> totally awesome, right? Uh, because Tails has a uh, BitLocker on it now as well, in addition to Lux. Um, and so that's uh, something is, uh, in retrospect, yeah, he might have been able to do that. I would have at least tried it. Um, and another point here is that you may not know it. If you're running Windows 11, you may not know it, but the backups you have might be encrypted. And the encryption key might be tied to the TPM module on your computer. And if you don't know that and that computer dies, you will lose your backups. That is a possibility. It is possible that that drive there, like you can go into the BitLocker settings inside of Windows and you can get the decryption key. So right now, if you are using Windows, I would go in to your BitLocker on your computer and verify any and every drive that you have in the computer and as a backup drive. Make sure if it is encrypted, you know how to get into that drive. And here is one of the things I would recommend. This is moving on to the next tips. I would verify that you can get to those drives without your computer because what windows is doing right now is adding pass keys to decryption modules embedded in the tpm module on your computer and most people don't know what that even means what it means is it stores the pass key to easily access that drive on the hardware of the computer which means if the hardware of the computer dies or you need to access those backups from somewhere else you may not be able to so i will highly highly recommend you try accessing that data from a different computer be it a friend's computer or a secondary computer you have floating around or hey if nothing else try it on that same computer with a random linux build now not every linux build has bitlocker pre-installed but you can install it uh, of course on linux most of them will have the lux encryption installed uh, tails is certainly one that does have both uh, what I'm going to recommend for most people, though, again, if you are around this channel, you know I recommend using Linux Mint if you are new to Linux. It is simply easy. It works with a lot of things. And uh, I, I don't know exactly if you can get the BitLocker itself on here. But here is the point. Even if your drives are not in, uh, encrypted with BitLocker, what I'd recommend you try doing is download Linux Mint. Get yourself a little USB drive and make a bootable disk. Even if you're not planning on running Linux long term, keep this guy in a, in a drawer somewhere that you can access. If you run into some type of problems, you can plug this guy in, boot Linux off of this, and then you can attempt to access those drives. And uh, if your backups cannot be accessed with that Linux Mint build, you have good strong suggestion to think you may not actually have the backups that you think you might have. So I'd highly recommend doing that. Keep a couple of Linux distributions floating around. Like I said, Linux Mint is what I would use. If you know you are using BitLocker, you might go for da downloading a copy of Tails instead, even though really it's designed for anonymous internet browsing uh, through the Tor network. Uh, the thing about uh, Tails is it does come with BitLocker and and Lux encryption already out of the box, which means if you know you have your decryption keys, you can boot that computer into Tails, you can plug your drive in, and you can still access your data without any extra major steps. So that is uh, the take-home message today. If you are using Windows, there is a uh, non-zero possibility that Windows has encrypted your drives, your backup drives, and you don't know it. And if you do not know that and you cannot access those drives, then you are going to be in a world of hurt when you you go to rely on those backups. But as long as your computer is still working, do not delay. Boot up that BitLocker instance and see if any of your backups are encrypted. And if they are, make sure you know how to get into those in the event your computer dies because the current Windows model wants to embed the accessing of encrypted drives onto the particular piece of hardware that you have, not a, a passkey or a password or something else that you have elsewhere. So there is my take-home message for you today. Let me know your thoughts about all this in the comments down below.